See that right there, guys? That is the upcoming M5 CS. It's a video that's coming out very, very soon on Remove Before Race. Just before that will come this, the car it's based on the brilliant M5 competition. Now, I mentioned this because the CS, or Club Sport brand, is something that BMW M are doubling down on alongside even more performance variants of their cars, like the M3 giving you a manual option and hopefully a touring option soon. But unlike BMW M, most other modern performance houses are running away from the idea of limited number, small production, combustion cars made specifically for a very small number of customers. And they're afraid because of emission targets and the general consensus of these kind of cars within Europe. It's a very negative idea. But BMW M are doubling down on it. Now, after I appeared in the recent M-Town TV spot as Mr. AMG, I started thinking more and more, I need to get a proper M car because I love the heritage of the brand. Seeing the E30 out there and the lovely CS outside the Hyperim store made things even more interesting. By the way, a huge thanks to you guys for watching that video. I really didn't think anyone would, but it's nearing half a million, so you really have spoken that, hey, you love the M-Town concept, and I'll get you more of those kind of vlogs if I can. So my initial idea was to go for something like the M3 or the new M4, but I've heard that every influence under the planet is basically gonna get one, which makes it massively unattractive for me. Luckily for me though, the right type of influencer had been whispering in my ear. Over Christmas and New Year, I've been influenced constantly, both publicly and privately, by RBR friend Chris Harris, who constantly goes on about how much he loves his M2 competition. So like any other petrol head, I started thinking and the gears started turning in my head. And I started thinking, I really want an M2 now. Now, I've always said I think it's the absolute best compact performance car versus all of its rivals. And now I think it's finally time that I put my money where my mouth is. So today, not only will you see the collection of the M2 that I bought, no surprise what you have assumed it is already, but you'll also get to see how I've changed my methodology of buying cars so I lose less money, how I'm financing this particular car, and then we'll also go on a short first drive and I'll tell you the mods that I've done and that I'm planning on this car as well. So now let's head over to Berry BMW, their new site in Croydon, and do a quick click and collect delivery before returning here and continuing the rest of the video. Right guys, I've arrived. It's quite late. This is the brand new BMW Berry in Croydon, formerly Cooper's BMW in Croydon. So it's their brand new digs. They're gonna completely revamp the place. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go inside. My car is hiding right there in the handover bay. As you can see, save that just for a few minutes later first. I'm gonna show you the showroom inside, a couple of cool M cars that they have before we do the unveil here. So guys, here is the new Berry Croydon. You can see it's absolutely massive, but it does look like a typical BMW dealership. Now I spoke to Tony and David and what they're planning is to have this entire side of the dealership completely M specific. So they're actually gonna try and make like a mini M town here see how far they can get away with that theme without pissing anyone off too much. But you can see they already started with 440i there, M135i we'll check out in a minute, and the Performance Edition version there, M5 Comp. Let's go and take a look at all of these little cars before we do the unveil, which is over there. Now, there's a couple of interesting cars that I actually want to get on the channel later that I want to show you first before we head over to the handover area. One is sitting right there. So here is the new 128Ti. What is this? Essentially, it's a Golf GTI fighter from BMW M. You can see it's got a lot of little red details around it to exude sportiness, I guess. I think it's the right side of not being a Halfords knockoff. Looks quite tasteful. I like the red calipers there as well. The shadow line lights look really good against the white as well. This is for about 50 horsepower lower compared to the 135i, and it's not got the X-Drive, so it's only front wheel drive, but that makes the car lighter as well, hence the name. So it should be quite interesting. Should we get this on the channel? Do you want to see a full review of the 128Ti? Let me know. Now, speaking of the M135i, there's a few more interesting ones at the end over there. So in the soon to be growing M-Town section of BMW Berry Croydon, we've got this Melbourne Red Metallic M135i. This is a gorgeous color. It makes a hatchback that's otherwise not really that sporty looking in my opinion. Looks super sporty. This has got all of the M performance parts as well. You can see with the canards, the extra lower splitter. We've got an extra side sill there, as you can see, which is exaggerated. The M style mirrors. We've got an A35, A45 style roof spoiler as well, which is actually really quite tasteful. It's not that in your face. 
The weirdest option though is that lower rear diffuser. Why is it weird? I call it kitchen granite carbon, but it's some kind of forged carbon fiber. Anyway, the red looking really good, makes this look really sporty. Talk about sporty M135i's. Here is the MoTeC edition of the M135i. It's been dropped, it's wider, it's got different parts on it from Maxton design. It's like the front splitter, which is larger than the standard one. Side skirts as well. Got the entire black pack. Just the stance, I think, is really quite impressive on this compared to the standard one. You come around the side there, you see the MoTeC badge. Subtle, but if you know, you know. It's got the standard M performance wing, as you saw on the other M135i just now. It's got a more aggressive lower rear diffuser, which looks good. And then hiding in there, you know that brand, Reams Exhaust Systems. Yeah, really nice job here by MoTeC. Now to introduce the man who made it all happen, it's David King, Mr. Bimmer Deals. It's Bimmer Deals, right? It on Instagram, <laughs> Bimmer Deals. There it is. Give the man a follow. He made everything super smooth. I'll go through the whole service with these guys. You probably know Bimmer Deals and TRL from all the other social media channels as well. But it was absolutely brilliant. Thank you, mate. So guys, invariably, when you're in the car world like I am, you know a lot of people, you know a lot of dealerships, there's a lot of ways to get a hold of cars. And frankly speaking, you have a lot of clout in terms of who you can go to and where you can buy a car from. The reason I decided to go to Bimmer Deals and TRL, the team of the two of them together, which most people don't realize they're a team, is I've been viewing their social media and seeing just how much bang for buck customers seem to get. And just the average customer, not influencers or YouTubers or famous people, etc. Just anyone who comes in who has a passion for the car that they're buying. These guys seem to go the extra mile in providing stuff like detailing or any additional mods that you might want, like I showed on these cars back here. They go that extra mile and they give the customer what they want prior to or after delivery. And that's so important. And I wanted that because this was a car that I was really excited about. I haven't been this excited about a car in ages. So guys, that's the Berry Croydon showroom. It's gonna be even more M-Tan themed than it is currently, which I'm super happy to hear about. But now, handover bay's back there. Let's go and check my baby out right now. So guys, here it is, my M2 CS. It's not really a car I ever thought I'd buy. And I'm gonna go into the reasons of why I eventually chose the CS, why it became affordable from being unaffordable, how I financed it, what was the value added I got from the guys here at Berry, being petrol heads, what were they able to do to accommodate my needs before picking this car up. And then we're gonna go on a first drive and see what this car is like in first impressions. So guys, we're back home. Uh, apologies for the state of the car, but this is the reality when you drive your car back home, particularly in the winter months. So the first question that I want to address is why? Why did I go for the 80K M2 CS? That's the base price of this car, rather than going for something that's pretty close and a lot cheaper, like the M2 competition. Well, bizarrely, you might find this weird to hear, but I did it actually to save money. You see, I'm gonna break this down for you a little bit. I've changed my methodology of how I buy cars because I've bought a lot of cars over the years, something that I'll show you on YouTube eventually. I'll go through every car I've bought just for your enjoyment. But I've lost too much money on them because I've always been a first adopter. I've always gone for a car, the best, the newest, like say the new M3, new M4, etc., and ended up losing a lot of money in the first few years over it. Whereas I've now stopped doing that. I mean, who remembers when an M5 used to be 70K or an M3 at 50K? That wasn't that long ago, and that's the cost of the M2 today. Now, the price of new cars are getting overinflated every year, so this idea of losing more and more money is going to become even worse because when they come on the used market, they fall to what the customer assumes they should be, which is the monies that I'm talking about. So if I got an M2 competition, for example, a standard one, I could keep it for three years, whether I bought it cash or finance, and I'm sure it'd be worth less than 30K at the end of those three years. So all of that money has essentially gone down the toilet, which is a real shame. But if you have a limited run car, which is limited numbers, and hopefully we assume that it will be some kind of a future classic, you've got a better chance of retaining some of that money and retaining a lot more equity. And then it starts becoming an asset rather than a complete liability. 
Now, see, I've tested this recently. Regular viewers will know that in the last three years, I've bought three very special cars for me, AMG cars. The first was my C63 Black Series. Of course, an absolute legend. Then the C63S Edition 1 Motorsport, again, another limited run car. And finally, quite a simple car, but I bought it at the right price. It was my A45 that I bought for about 25 grand. Now, all three of these cars in some way have held their value. The Black Series, unsurprisingly, being the car that it is, has gone up a little bit in value since I bought it. The C63 Edition 1 is about the same place, even though I bought it about two years ago. And I expect just normal C63s from this generation will hold their value, especially when the rumored four cylinder comes out. And finally, the A45 again, because I bought it at the right price, it's holding steady where it is now. So I, instead, I've built equity in these cars that I love and I can keep for a long time and still enjoy them. Now, the idea behind the M2CS is the exact same one. It's likely to be the last of its kind from BMW, and particularly with the trend of the larger grills coming into their cars now. And it's really the successor to the E30 in the modern era, with the small body, the six-cylinder engine, and the great dynamics that this car has to offer. Of course, it is firstly much more powerful than the M2 competition, with a significantly higher 40 brake horsepower coming out of the S55 engine. The CS takes things even further. It's a more grown up version of the normal M2. It's got the M adaptive suspension, which is the feature I think I like the most in this car. It's got lightweight measures like the carbon fiber bonnet, the carbon fiber roof, the CS specific carbon front splitter, and the CS specific carbon rear spoiler. Of course, you've got other carbon bits everywhere. You've also got some of the nicest wheels I've ever seen. These are the 863 frozen gold wheels which look absolutely incredible. Again, specific to the CS, we've got larger brakes as well. You can get ceramics, which I haven't got on this car. The color is Misano Blue, which is unique to the CS within the M2 range only. And then finally inside the car, it's that much more plush than the standard M2. You've got the bucket seats from the M4 CS. You've got CS details on the dash and on the steering wheel. You've got a completely carbon lightweight center console. You've got gloss carbon fiber everywhere and Alcantara everywhere. It's just a really nice place to be. So this is a really good chance of a car that's gonna hold this value for being a future classic M car. But then that's only one part of the equation. The other bit is buying it at the right price because this is still an expensive car despite all of that. That's where Bimmer deals and TRL come in, the guys at Berry. Now they got me a fantastic dealer contribution that was so attractive that I had to then get a finance quote, which I'll go into in a minute but they do it across the band on BMW, not just the high-end stuff, all the way down below. Check their social media and you'll get an idea. I really recommend that you go to them for a quote because I've asked other dealers and no one can get anywhere near them. They've got a very different method of operating, which is mostly online, which allows them to get better deals for you guys. So I really recommend that. So that's one part of the equation. I bought it at a very, very good price for a CS. The next part was finance. Now I've dealt with a lot of finance companies. as I'm sure all of you guys have but this was the first time that I tried it with Charles and Dean. Now they are a broker and they deal with all the big finance houses in the UK. And just to break it down in a simple way for you, the quote they got me on the CS was almost the same that I was quoted elsewhere for an M2 competition. And we're talking monthly figures with the same kind of term, etc. And that's when it became an absolute no brainer. I was so impressed that in fact, I'm gonna to look to get the rest of my fleet refinanced with them as well. I've also got a link down below. You guys need to just get an idea because when I was looking at this car, I was just window shopping. And when I got the finance quote, I was like, I just can't let this go. It's, it's too good of a deal. So I'd really recommend get a quote on a car that you're musing about, maybe you're not even musing about. Speak to Mike specifically at Charles and Dean. He's dealing with all the RBR inquiries. I've got this in place before this video so you guys can take full advantage of it. But yeah, I'll let you know how I get on with the refinancing of my other cars in the future, because it's all about saving costs and making things a bit easier for us car collectors. Now, as I said, the service at Berry goes above and beyond, even for the normal customer. Now, I wanted some stuff done before I picked up the car. For example, I had some lovely tires come in from Michelin. Big thanks to them. It's Pilot Sport 4S's because in the wet, the Cup 2s aren't that great. And you're gonna see more on that topic in the full review that's coming up. We're gonna do a proper tire test on this car. And they very kindly got that installed, first of all, very easily. Then I wanted a drop on the car, just a little bit. I wanted the springs drops. So they got that done for me at Deutsche Tech. It was done almost immediately. It was done very quickly. Deutsche Tech did a fantastic job and I think the car looks that much better. But the point I'm making here, it was all arranged by the dealership prior to delivery. And finally, I wanted a bit of paint correction done because you know what cars are like when they come from factory. So they went to Detail Driven and he did a fantastic job. And he even, he even went to the lengths of ceramic coating my gold wheels. 
and my calipers. And they're gonna survive this weather a lot better. I think you can already kind of see that on the body. So really pleased with this. Now we're gonna go on a first drive. I'm gonna give you some initial impressions. It's gonna be a full review later. And I'm also planning some mods. I'm planning something with BMW M on M performance parts. And then we're gonna look at aftermarket solutions on the exhaust. And that's something that we're gonna discuss right now. So let's drive the car and see what it feels like. Right, so first drive of my M2CS. Oh, this is lovely. You know, I thought I'd be put off by the um, thickness of the CS steering wheel, but I actually quite like it. Very nice feel altogether. Currently, I'm in comfort mode, and it's actually surprisingly really comfortable. I had assumed going into this, being a CS, that it was going to be that much more rigid than the normal competition. But if memory serves, this with the adaptive suspension out of the M4, it's actually doing a really good job of dealing with the bumps. It feels like a more grown up car, despite the fact that it's more proficient on track and doing dynamic stuff when it's taken to that higher level. In normal driving, it just seems actually really quite comfortable for a small two door, four seat sports car. Truth be told, this is not actually the first drive. First drive back was um, with the family in the car and I was expecting moans and complaints as I get in my C63 uh, Black Series and C63S, sitting in the back and not being very happy about it, but surprisingly, I actually said it was really roomy and comfortable. And that happens a lot in M2s, because you actually get a lot more space in the interior than you think. There's a lot more, there's more space in the back of this than there is in an M8. It's true, amazing. The other thing I love about the M2s is the steering. The steering is fantastic on these cars. Unlike other modern BMWs that I've driven recently, uh, for example, the M340i or the previous M5 that I complained, you had very vague steering feel. The M2s across the board just have really precise and lovely steering feel. Right, we're gonna move things up a notch just into sport mode. I have to be a little bit careful because this, of course, is in the running in period, so to keep the revs a little bit low. There's not much in terms of sound in this. Of course, this has got the OPF. Um, it's subject to the latest EU regulations. So, of course, you've got active sound management, ASM in the BMWs. We've got sound coming through the speakers. And this is the one downside of the current competition and the CS and pretty much every new car, not just BMW, but yes, the BMW M car is very much affected by it you need to get an aftermarket solution. So one of the future videos with this M2 CS is gonna be the best mods that you can get for the M2 series in general. And in that, we're gonna explore also an exhaust solution. I'm thinking either of someone like Remus or someone like Akrapovic, and you get different layers of systems as well. For example, in the Akrapovic system, you can get either just the rear system or you can go for their full evolution, which goes throughout the entire car. But again, it's absolutely necessary to get one. I think probably the Akrapovic one is the one to go for. Let's see what I unearth in the next few months. Stay tuned, both on YouTube and on Instagram for any updates on that. Now in terms of the 4S's, we've got some really good grip on offer. Now I know what Cup 2's are like in the wet because when I had my AMG GTR, I never changed the Cup 2's to any other tire during the winter. And it was a nightmare in the winter because it would squirm at every single roundabout or any hint of a curve. And we swapped those out, of course, in this for the 4S's. And honestly, I really haven't had the traction control light come on at all. I really love how responsible this S55 engine is. I have to be careful when running in. I'm being really bad, you know. This isn't good. I mean, it still sounds pretty good. I know it's got some artificial sand in there, but I won't be crying until I get my exhaust system installed. So my takeaway from this first drive, really comfortable. Liking the addition of the 4S's, not having squeaky bum time on the roundabouts. So, cannot wait to get the 1200 miles done on this, run it in properly, and see what the car can do once it's run in. Look out for that mod before race video. Best mods on the M2 series. We're gonna explore things beyond just the exhaust. It's gonna be really quite good for any owners or potential owners out there. So guys, thanks for watching my personal collection of my M2 CS. If you enjoyed this and the first drive, Please do like, subscribe and share. I'm going to enjoy doing these 1200 miles. This is a very, very special little sports car. See you guys next time.